One to go up top, dumps it off across the middle, for that. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here for another episode of Treeb Talks. What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here. And originally, I was going to make a different video, but you guys seem to enjoy all these mock drafts. So I'm going to let out a mock draft every Wednesday until the NFL draft is officially open next month on April 26th. So I think that's three three to four more mock drafts. And uh, the fourth one is going to be a full first round mock draft. So uh, about three more Jaguars mock drafts before we hit the big day draft day. And we finally, finally just get to see what the Jaguars are going to do because it's just been speculated and speculated heavily online what the Jaguars are going to do. And again, before I get into this video, I want you to know that each mock draft I do, I try to put the Jags in different situations. Like, I'm not going to pick the same first round person, first round pick every single time. For example, the first draft we took Dwayne Haskins. And, you know, you can make the argument the reason we won't take Haskins is because we have Foles now. But in the next one, uh, we picked Hawkinson in the first round. And this one, we don't pick Hawk. It's a different person in the first round of this draft. And it came through perfect circumstances. I was going to draft Hawk again in the first round, but I wanted to give you guys different situations and different scenarios for what the Jaguars can do in the 2019 NFL Draft. So ladies and gentlemen, let me quit wasting your time. Let's hop right into the video. I am Tree from Tree Talks, and this is my Jacksonville Jaguars 7-round mock draft 3.0. Round one, pick seven, offensive tackle, Jonah Williams. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Jonah Williams, dude, there's no way he falls to the Jaguars at seven. Let me let me go through what the first six picks were in the draft, and you tell me if this is not realistic. Quinn Williams goes to the Cardinals at number one. Nick Bosa to the Niners. Josh Allen to the Jets. The Raiders take their quarterback. Tampa Bay gets Grady Williams. The Giants also take their quarterback. Now, I'm usually a big proponent on the Jaguars not selecting a tackle in the first round, but if you got a guy like Jonah Williams, who might be one of the best offensive tackles to come through the draft in a long, long time, you know, you need to hop on that opportunity, especially because you have seen so many great offensive linemen the last couple of years get drafted really, really early. Uh, in the first round, and Jonah Williams is one of those characters. I personally would not pick Jawan Williams if he was on the board and Hawk was on the board and Haskins even was on the board. You know, that would be my third most likely pick. But the fact that you have the best offensive tackle staring at you in the face at pick seven, you do not turn that away. And the fact of the matter is, is that that is... That could happen, ladies and gentlemen. That's something that not a lot of people are talking about. But Jonah Williams, the offensive tackle from Alabama, does have a potential to slide right to number seven. And if you are a fellow fan like myself and you are opposed to a tackle in the first round, I think you should be okay with it if the Jaguars are able to land Jonah Williams, who in my honest opinion is the best offensive lineman in this year's uh, draft class. So that is why I was okay with going with the tackle position in the first round, mostly because Jonah Williams fell to us, um, <clears throat> fell to us in the first round. So that would be basically, in my opinion, the only time I would select a offensive tackle in the first round. But that is neither here nor there, ladies and gentlemen. And the Jaguars in this mock draft select Jonah Williams in the first round, pick number seven. Round two, pick six, wide receiver, A.J. Brown, Ole Miss. Now, I love, love, love A.J. Brown. I told you that I'm going to try and make this as different as possible in every single mock draft, but I love A.J. Brown, and I love A.J. Brown in the second round. This is a guy that the Jaguars could draft, hopefully in the second round, but maybe even like trade up in the first round to get him if we really feel like we don't have an opportunity at him because I honestly think this kid right here is the best wide receiver in this year's draft class. He was on the same team as DK Metcalf. I think he was better than DK Metcalf. I think he even put up better stats than Metcalf did last season. Obviously, like I said in the last video, Metcalf's combine and you know pure athleticism has weighed over A.J. Brown. 
now in the eyes of scouts and DK will be a first round pick as opposed to AJ Brown really kind of falling down draft boards. You know, he's like I think the fourth, fifth, sixth wide receiver uh, on the big boards. And, you know, he's behind some guys like Paris Campbell. He's behind him. And, you know, he's a guy, again, he wasn't a first-round selection. He's under him as well. So I think A.J. Brown isn't a reach in the second round, and I think it would be a very, very good, very safe selection for the Jaguars to improve their wide receiver core to really help out Nick Foles. And I think A.J. Brown is that type of guy. He's a vertical threat that also has really good feet. He has, you know, he has everything D.K. Metcalf has, but he has the ability to run routes as well. And I'm really excited to see what this guy can do. And I hope and I pray that the Jaguars end up getting A.J. Brown because this is my my favorite prospect probably in the entire draft. And I'm really, really pulling for the Jacksonville Jaguars to be able to select him in the second round because that would be a steal. And the Jaguars always draft their good receivers in the second round. Round three, pick five, Ben Banagoo, edge rusher, TCU. You know, last uh, mock draft, your boy did not draft an edge rusher, and you guys sure let me hear it in the comment section down below. And, you know, again, I'm a big proponent of the Jaguars not drafting defense in the first round, which I think a lot of people should also be big proponents of not selecting defense in the first round. I understand that when Yannick and got me and uh, my boy Chris, Chris, shout outs to you if you're watching this, we were talking about it. Uh, Chris is a guy that thinks the Jags should go edge rusher in the first round because of, uh, you know, the big talent that the jet, that, uh, this, that position has, uh, it's probably one of the deepest position groups in, uh, this year's class is the edge rusher. And he thinks that's why we should select one in the first round. However, I think that with how deep this class is, you could get away with selecting one in the third round. And I mean, look at the stud we drafted in the third round. That was a pass rusher in Yannick Ngakwe and Ben Banagoo from TCU, who's also a really solid pass rusher, by the way. Uh, if he's available in the third round, that's going to be a steal for the Jaguars, and he's going to be able to come on the field uh, when Yannick Ngakwe you know, needs needs rest or needs to be on the bench, and we need a sub for him. And, uh, you know, that's a, that's a big thing, and that's a thing that, you know, I've been kind of blinded by, and that's the fact that we really don't have an edge rusher coming off the bench right now to replace Yannick Ngakwe and Calais Campbell at the same time. I mean, we have Smoot out there, but that is about it. That's about all we have to, you know, sub in and come in now, especially because we're going to be moving Taven Bryan to the defensive tackle position. And, you know, he's going to be coming in for Avery Jones and uh, Marcel Darius. So that is his area and where he's going to be playing most of his reps. So I think that is a good point. And I do think that the Jaguars need somebody that will come in for either Calais or Yannick Ngakwe. And I think that uh, Ben Bonagu, who is, like I said, I, I looked up some tape of him before I made this video. He's a solid, solid edge rusher, and I think that he's going to be good coming in relief of either Yannick Ngakwe or Calais Campbell, and I think this third-round pick can make an instant impact. Round three, pick 34, tight end, Dawson Knox, Ole Miss. So two Ole Miss players selected in this draft, and it's not Metcalf and A.J. Brown. It's not Ole Miss's quarterback and A.J. Brown or Metcalf. We're going to snag up their tight end by the name of Dawson Knox. Knox can also play. Like I said, there's a lot of deep positions in this year's draft class. And lucky enough for the Jaguars, it's mostly in uh, positions of need for them. And tight end is one of those positions. And, you know, with us not taking Hawk in the first round, that kind of limits our chance round after round that we don't pick a tight end. And I think that, you know, with A.J. Brown on the clock in the second round, that's too good of a pick to pass up. So you're going to have to wait until the third round to draft a tight end. And in that situation, I think the Jags are more than fine. Um, Dawson Knox is a solid tight end out of Ole Miss. And he's one of, uh, you know, one of the better tight ends in this year's class. Uh, you know, you got Hawk, Faint, and Irv Smith Jr. You know, those are the big three. But, you know, after that, there are still some solid Tight ends, Dawson Knox as well, Isaac Nada, you know, those guys are really solid at their positions, and they're part of the reason why this tight end class is said to be one of the deepest uh, in this year's NFL draft. And I think snagging up Dawson Knox, giving him an opportunity to prove himself, and though he is a third-round pick and not a first-round pick, so you guys might be a little snobby and saying, oh, he's not going to make an impact, we're going to rely on Swayman O'Shaughnessy. 
don't don't talk so soon. I think Dawson Knox could be a starting tight end for us, and he could be a, a starter in the two tight end set as well. You know, even if he doesn't get reps right away, I think if we just slowly bring him into the offense like we should, then I think he's going to be able to be a really, really solid, reliable, young tight end. And I think we could get our solid, young, reliable tight end in the third round. But, you know, I'm still a proponent of getting Hawk in the first round if the circumstances are right. Like I say, it's all about the circumstance, ladies and gentlemen. That's why I always try to change the first round pick in every mock draft that I do. And in this case, we wait until the third round to draft our tight end. And that guy's name is Dawson Knox out of Ole Miss. And he will be the future tight end of the Jaguars, at least in this mock draft. Round four, pick seven, running back David Montgomery, Iowa State. David Montgomery is one of the better running backs in this year's draft class, which is why I was pretty surprised that that boy went all the way in the fourth round. And then I remembered that no linebacker or running back heard this on uh, Twitter, by the way. No running back or linebacker has a first round grade. So then that doesn't really surprise me. But Montgomery is a playmaker. I think for sure if he's on the board in the fourth round, let's draft him. Let's try to bring him into the offense because as of right now, our running back room consists of Leonard Fournette and Thomas Rawls. And you know how Fournette gets injured, and you know how Thomas Rawls get injured. So we need a reliable third running back to kind of fill that void. And I think David Montgomery in the draft in the fourth round will be a very, very solid pickup and try again, kind of like Knox, to slowly, slowly transition him into the offense and for him to hopefully make an impact as soon as possible as the Jaguars running back. So, <clears throat> with all that being said, like I say, the Jaguars need a new running back to pair up with Leonard Fournette, you know, and especially in case Rawls gets injured or Fournette gets injured. We need more depth at the running back position after letting Grant and Yeldon go, who I believe both still have yet to find a team. So, I think the Jags, if they can, should try and bring Corey Grant back for a cheap price, but uh, that's... That's their decision, but that's what I would do if I was in the front office. But I, I'm still a proponent of the Jaguars selecting a running back. I wouldn't select it any higher than the fourth round. I think the fourth round is really when you need to do it. And then, you know, later on, it depends on how serious you really are at getting a running back to pair up with Leonard Fournette. If you draft one in the fourth round, you're serious. You draft one in the fifth, I mean, okay, we don't have a fifth round pick. You draft one in the sixth, seventh round, I really don't think the Jags are that serious at bringing him along. But if they're able to snag a guy like David Montgomery in the fourth, I think they're really serious about bringing this guy along and being the running back that we rely on a little bit and maybe even in the special teams game returning kicks even I think David Montgomery would be a really good pick in the fourth round for the Jags round six pick five linebacker David Long West Virginia best player available based off a of team needs is what the sixth round draft pick is and we're gonna go with a linebacker I almost went center there um, <clears throat> last time I made a video, I picked a safety, I think, in this, no, I picked the safety in the third round, that's why people were mad, I understand that now, but, you know, once you get to the sixth, seventh round, my seventh round pick, I'm gonna want to talk about just a little bit, but my sixth round pick, David Long, I ain't got much to say, I think that may be for depth, and, uh, he's a guy that could perform on special teams, but like I say, you're in the sixth round, you're really trying to look for the best player available at a position of need, and linebacker, though we did pick up Jake Ryan, you know, depth is still an issue a little bit. So David Long, I think, will bring that, and he will also bring a little bit of swagger onto the Jaguars' special teams unit. Round 7, pick 22, quarterback, Easton Stick, North Dakota State University. Now, I know the Jaguars are clamoring, Jaguar fans are clamoring for one of these sexy quarterbacks either in the first round to back up Nick Foles, but unfortunately, with the amount of money that they are paying Foles, you are not going to get an attractive backup, but you're going to get a guy that's a little bit more exciting than Cody Kessler. In fact, a lot of bit exciting. North Dakota State FCS champs, uh, they played Eastern Washington in the championship game this year. Easton Stick, he's a four-year starter for North Dakota State, which is one of the biggest FCS powerhouses. It's also where Carson Wentz went to school. Um, his best year throwing the ball, he had 2,752. Uh, yards and he had two years of 28 touchdowns and in those years he threw 28 touchdowns he only threw eight and in seven interceptions and then his sophomore and freshman year his freshman year he went 13 and 4 19 and 9 his sophomore year and this guy can also run the ball pretty well uh, his freshman year he got 485 yards his career uh, most rushing yards is 685 
uh, and that was his sophomore year, and he got over 600 yards every year after that. So he is kind of a Blake Bortles factor, except for the fact that he won't turn the ball over. He's a little bit, mo he's pretty mobile, and he doesn't make a lot of mistakes. And I think that Easton Stick uh, is a guy that, sit him on the bench for a while, I think this guy could actually be a really, really successful quarterback. Like I said, he went to North Dakota State. That is an FCS school but he dominated at the FCS level, at the most dominant level. I think a lot of people sometimes undervalue the FCS talent, and they don't want to acknowledge it. But with Easton Stick, especially because he's projected to be there in the seventh round or even go undrafted, I think this is an opportunity for the Jaguars to select Easton Stick and bring him along to be the backup to Nick Foles and really try to groom him for the future. Maybe not for our future, but his first personal future. You know, I think that in the seventh round, and a guy like Easton Stick is still on the board. I think this is a guy that would be a good, solid backup to Nick Foles. And even if his number was called, maybe could perform, ladies and gentlemen. So we waited until the seventh round to pick our quarterback. Something that I didn't think would, would ever happen earlier on in the season. But that is where we're at now. And that was our selection of Easton Stick out of North Dakota State in the seventh round. And that was my seven-round mock draft for the Jacksonville Jaguars 3.0. What would you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody outworking me. Them are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.